Driving me a little crazy, every video you see on YouTube now is I investigated the city that made drugs legal. And every thumbnail is, is the presenter pulling that soy wojack face pointing at a homeless man. Come on, that's word inflation, isn't it? Investigated. If that's the definition of investigation now, walking up and shoving a microphone in the face of a crackhead, give the UFC post-match interviews Pulitzers. Joe Rogan, through a deep investigation, finally got to the bottom of the question. Are the Irish funny? One of the kicks that he checked is what broke your leg. There was no check. There was not one of them I checked. Your wife is in me DMs, hey baby. Clearly, the answer is yes. Having said that, my distaste with this clickbait format definitely hasn't stopped me from jumping on the bandwagon. I did it two weeks ago. I'm doing it now. I'll do it again next week with I Investigated Rashies. Today's investigation, though, is crikey journalist Bernard Keane, and he truly is worthy of investigation. And by investigation, I mean reading a few of his articles and laughing at him. Seriously, I can't even be bothered to investigate whether his name is Bernard or Bernard. I'm just going to go with Bernard because he looks like one of those. I've spent a lot of my life collecting rare jazz albums that are just on Spotify. Fuck. So here we go. I investigated the man who can't tilt his head upwards. Look at every picture of him. Does he deliberately make the same face when he poses for every photo? It's his version of the Mr. Beast thumb face, except instead of looking like he's won the lotto in every photo, it looks like he's being both really condescending and just finished having a big cry. Yep, I actually genuinely do think I'm better than you. No, it's not a cope. In case you forgot who Bernard Keane is, he's a journo at Crikey and a guy that goaded the Murdochs into some now aborted defamation suit because they took offence to him saying the most boring, played out, run of the mill, media talking head shit you could possibly say about January 6th. And that was the big point of his life, it seems. He once dared say what everyone else dared say. What a crusader. In the first crusade, when there was a fuck ton of crusaders. And after being threatened by Lachlan Murdoch, Crikey then took the article down, only to put it back up, engaging a strategy firm, a strategy firm, in order to create a campaign where they pretended to be fearless free speech warriors to drive up subscriptions. Keep in mind, this was after Crikey had published an article accusing me of choreographing the release of the news of my legal troubles in order to raise money. What? You mean by having an upload schedule? What do you call your actions then, crikey? Did you just accidentally fall into a consultancy firm on your way to the bank with conveniently just the right amount of cash for a highly choreographed media campaign after deliberately misinterpreting what happened to me and then using your misinterpretation as a business model? I bet after what's happened to me since, they consider setting fire to their own headquarters and the only thing that's stopping them is the worry that the sheer amount of grease on Bernard Keane's head would burn the whole street down. No, let's not pretend they have that much of a conscience. They just haven't thought of it yet. Anyway, Bernard Keane has just recently come out of the woodwork to do what he does best. And crikey by extension, really, which is shit on someone facing legal strife. Which, Keane, if you're jealous of the attention that people get for getting prosecuted, just march up to your local police station and let them search for your computer. Anyway, he wrote this article on war crimes whistleblower David McBride. Why is whistleblower David McBride on a podcast for far-right conspiracists? The Afghan Files whistleblower has enjoyed too little scrutiny from those on the left. If you want background for this video, watch this one here, but I am so sick of context. I'm just going to continue with my smackdown of this blobfish that hasn't been taken to the surface yet. For one, using a concept as nebulous as the, the left, left in a headline of an article on a whistleblower whose complaints pertain to pretty complicated issues including war crimes, foreign interference and lack of accountability up the chain of command it really demonstrates how shallow Bernard Keane is. But it also perfectly encapsulates his writing career. You can just replace every word he's ever written with the classic two. Um, actually, the left thinks something is good. Um, actually, they're actually associated with someone who is right. What the fuck? I mean, for somebody who's part of the whole Trump is a symptom crowd, he really is a symptom of the modern intelligence here in that they aren't remotely intelligent. They just seem to think that they're intelligent and that's enough. There is an extra irony with Keane's self-confessed obsession with nuance trolling, as his article removes any nuance. Keane is only putting McBride in the spotlight for daring to appear on a podcast which he personally doesn't like, not at all analysing the substance of McBride's allegations, doing what journalists love to do, boiling McBride's character down to the simple, easy descriptor of more, more complex, complex than you think, think, without ever expanding on that complexity. In fact, simplifying McBride's character down to, um, he's actually right-wing, which is always just code for, he doesn't go to the same shit art exhibitions my friends go to, so I can trash him to fill in my 800 words slot quota, paywalled for 200 fucking dollars a year. 
Most of the article is the usual predictable, uh, pro-Russia, anti-vaxxer. It's not even alleging that McBride is any of those things, by the way. It's just that he's on a podcast that is associated with those views. It's tried to say now, but it still amazes me how most journalists are more affronted by Russia and Trump than anything anywhere else in the world. I swear they can rationalise and ignore the most heinous acts committed by humans, but we'll be rocking back and forth in a corner about January 6th until they die from a paper cut at work. The main point of the article is just keen getting hung up about a comment McBride made in the moment on the pod in which he said in relation to Ben Robert Smith he won't be going to jail nor do I think he should in the sense there's absolutely nothing to be gained by putting our former soldiers in jail. Okay that's McBride's opinion is it newsworthy you written twitch streamer? It could have been something said in the spur of the moment and at the very least it's informed by his experience of being prosecuted for the last seven years. Personally I think we have a lot to gain from chucking Ben Robert Smith in prison. For one if he did that hilarious prosthetic leg gag at SAS bases who knows what filmed misadventures he'd get up to in Silverwater. But more importantly what McBride said on the pod isn't only some offhand comment from McBride but was the fucking policy of the Australian government up until very recently as McBride for years was the the only soldier being prosecuted, not for war crimes, but for whistleblowing. Why doesn't Bernard Keane write something about that? Instead, he's scolding a man who's done more to uncover Australia's conduct in Afghanistan than any of Keane's piece of shit friends in the media class, especially any journo that works for fucking crikey, where the most investigative thing they can do is listen to podcasts combing for wrong think. Wrong think, which even by crikey's stupid standards is so mild against the backdrop of everything that's happened to McBride. And it's not even like McBride was trying to defend Ben Robert Smith. As even Keane himself notes, McBride was pushing back against the podcast host adoration of Ben Robert Smith. And as I pointed out in my last video on the Four Corners hit job, McBride is not some black and white caricature of a villain who just loves war criminals, nor is he a man who hates all soldiers. And if you want to see McBride's long-held views on war crime and his motivations for leaking documents to the media, you can do a real advanced investigative journalism technique and read his fucking affidavit. In his affidavit, he talks about how concerned he was about seeming impunity for soldiers who commit killings that don't really add up. Listen to what he says about an incident where five children were killed by Australian special forces during a raid. The the way the incident was dealt with deeply troubled me and left me highly alert to the fact that we were asked to teach the rules of war, but there were no penalties for those who ignored them. Or again here, two sentences. I know I read them in the last video, but I don't think Bernard watched that one and I know he's going to watch this one. Afghan civilians were being murdered and Australian military leaders were at the very least turning the other way and at worst tacitly approving this behaviour. At the same time, soldiers were being improperly prosecuted as a smokescreen to cover inaction and failure to hold reprehensible conduct to account. But if reading an affidavit or an article is too hard for you, Bernard, this one should be easy enough. You'll love it. Just search McBride's Twitter. Look, you don't even have to change the tabs open on your computer right now, you fucking addict. See? McBride hasn't escaped scrutiny from those on the left. He's escaped scrutiny from those who can fucking read. To be fair, I think you are one of those that can read, Bernard. And I think you're deliberately, cynically and cruelly playing dumb in order to satiate your addiction to fighting with the nons on Twitter and feeling smug about it. And I sincerely hope you get the treatment for that addiction, even if the treatment is from you being ratioed by McBride's lawyers even more. But if you are sincere, I am very concerned that Crikey would employ someone so naive as to expect perfect Disney Marvel movie morality that, uh, if McBride dares to have an opinion I don't like, speaks to someone I don't like, or says something in the spur of the moment I disagree with, it's time to scrutinize him. And by scrutinize, I mean scold him and completely ignore the substantive shit he says. Then be baffled by people who do actually understand McBride's allegations. And now you might be saying, oh no, Keane's just calling for scrutiny on McBride's comments that he disagrees with. Nothing wrong with that. I just find it interesting that Keane said almost fuck all about McBride until right before he's about to be sentenced and then focuses on a sentence. Holding to account or just a c you at home, look at his face and decide. Keane did assert last November that McBride wasn't the perfect whistleblower, but made the correct comment that a whistleblower's intention shouldn't matter. It's just the conduct the whistleblower revealed that should. But that's not the real world. McBride's prosecutors really care about his intentions and they're under the microscope and obfuscatory slander and sensationalism like Keynes are going to be weaponized in order to achieve the highest possible sentence for McBride. He got the point in November, why couldn't he shut the fuck up a few months later?
right before McBride is set to be prosecuted, Kane decides he's bored and now it's time to borrow the same cynical line as Four Corners and the prosecution in questioning McBride's intentions. So I would call you a contrarian, Bernard, but you're not even original. You're in lockstep with the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions and it took you watching a Four Corners episode for you to even get there. So you're not even a contrarian. You're just a dumbass. Anyway, that's the thesis of this video. Shut the fuck up, Bernard. Stop sabotaging McBride and in turn the plight of future whistleblowers in Australia purely because you can't get the fuck off Twitter for five minutes. You can start by resisting the temptation to make a snarky tweet about this video. Come on, at least try. I'll be so impressed if you just shut the fuck up for a couple of days, bet you can't, prove me wrong, and as always, cancel your subscriptions to Crikey. They're ripping you off. Anyway, tune in next week where I investigate Domino's Pizza.